Hello everyone, it is Tuesday, August 18th, and here in Southern California we are in the midst of a heat wave. Um, yeah, today it's 104 and uh, we get notices from Southern California Edison to conserve power and uh, not to use major appliances like your washer and dryer or dishwasher till after 10 o'clock at night. Um, so last night I ended up doing three loads of laundry after 10 o'clock and I will show you what I washed in just a minute. Um, yeah, it's really hot here. I'm sure it's really hot in other areas of the country too. I just think there's like this massive heat bubble over the U.S. right now. I kind of wish I lived in the Northwest Territories at the moment because I prefer when it's cooler. My favorite months of the year are when it, the temperature doesn't really get above 70. So, anyhow, um, of course we also have a lot of wildfires here. Um, I don't know how wild the fires are, if they are arson or not, but uh, I took a little video with my cell phone yesterday when I was out and about doing errands, and the audio is not good because you just hear a lot of traffic, but I'll post it uh, right here, and you can see off in the distance over the, the mountains, you can see some plumes of smoke. This is the area where I live, kind of. I don't really live close to these mountains. They're about seven miles from where I live, but you can see the little smoke and a lot of fires going on in the area. You can see that one fire back there. So, also wanted to give an update on our persimmon tree, which is about two and a half half months from really being harvested. Uh, the persimmons are kind of small apple size at this point and uh, they are starting to turn color from green and starting to see a little bit of yellow come in and eventually they'll get that nice orangey persimmon color. Um, but the other day uh, I, I was out and I noticed all of a sudden a whole bunch of persimmons had, uh, the branch had dropped to the point where it was only about three or four feet above the ground and that was really weird. So I want to show you what happened in a couple more clips. Hey everyone, it's that time of year when I start doing persimmon updates. And my shadow is getting in the way, but this is the size they are now. And we still have two months to go before they ripen. So, uh, yesterday we had a problem. Let me. So, under this tree right here, uh, some of the persimmon branches suddenly dropped to about three or four feet above the ground, which blocked our access to the back of the property. And today I found out why. Let me see if I can zoom in. You see that break right there? That branch has broken. And now the problem is that it's laying on top of these other branches. And that break up there is higher than I can get to. That's probably 12 feet up. So, and I don't get up on ladders. So, anyways, you gotta figure this, this problem out. Our persimmon tree is just going crazy. The persimmons are really clumped up this year. 
Um, we really need a professional arborist to come in and just deal with it because it seems like we have a major branch break about every two years. Yeah, so that persimmon branch is still broken. We have not uh, got somebody out to cut it down. I have cut as much weight off of it as I can, but I can't do anything else. So we'll just kind of see how it goes. It's, it's resting on a power line, not like an electrical grid power line, but I think it's the AT&T um, internet line that goes to my neighbor's house. It's kind of resting. So we'll see. Um, it has to be cut down. Uh, okay, so let's talk about crochet because I have been massively crocheting and I have finished four afghans since the last time I did a video. I finished one more Jada afghan and I finished up three granny square afghans. And the the granny squares are all the double strand granny squares and I had made tons and tons of them uh, a few months ago when I was trying to go through a bunch of yarn scraps and yarn balls and just kind of clean up my yarn working area and uh, yeah the result was over a hundred granny squares so I put them together because I had bought that uh, Karen Simply Soft Yarn and that's what I use double strand to border all the squares and then to sew the squares together. So without any further ado, here's the first Jada. Okay. And here are the three granny square blankets. Now the interesting thing about, uh, especially the one that's bordered in the golden, is that, uh, well, I bought five of each color to do the outlines and the borders and, and sew everything together. And when you get down to almost being done with four of them, there's a little chance that you might use part of the fifth. Now for the blue one, I didn't use any of the fifth, but for whatever reason with the golden, I ended up using uh, quite a bit of the golden. And then I thought, well, I don't want to take that fifth skein and have to divide it into two parts. So this is what I did, is I took the strand from the middle of the skein and the strand from the outside of the skein and used those two. And it was a little cumbersome, but I still have the skein in one piece. But I did use more of that golden for whatever reason. Um, yeah, go figure. Anyway, so last night at 10 o'clock I started washing those and I just washed them one at a time and so they are all ready to go. I'm going to put them on Etsy hopefully later this week. So then I'll have five afghans on Etsy. And in the meantime, I have just barely started because I have enough yarn for three more. I uh, just barely started another Jada one, but um, not working real hard and fast on it. I need to go through my closet, which is just right here, which you can't see, pull out all my amigurumi, make sure I have good photographs of it so I can put it on Etsy. Um, and yeah, that's been what's going on here. Um, still a completely virus free zone and we're just hanging out here and being happy. So, um, 
Oh, I also wanted to say that I have, <clears throat> excuse me while I get a little iced coffee, because I don't drink hot coffee in the summer, I only drink iced coffee. So every night I make sure that my ice cube trays are filled and that I also make coffee before I go to bed because then it can cool down all night and it's just ready for the ice first thing in the morning or well I don't get up in the morning unless I absolutely have to um, but I, I make sure that uh, I always have coffee or iced coffee so whatever I have left over at the end of the day goes into a container in the refrigerator and then that's super chilled when it goes on the ice as well. So, yes, here's my first cup of iced coffee for the day. And, uh, yeah, that's a little, that's a little nightly chore I make myself do every day. I have to make sure I have ice, because my freezer doesn't have an ice maker. So I just have four ice cube trays in there, and... I make my ice, I make my coffee, and we're good to go. It's still August 18th. Just came back from an errand to take uh, something to the post office for the landlady. And, you know, I forgot I was going to talk a little bit about coins. Um, I'm not able to get coins right now to search. And that's fine. I mean, sometimes I can get like a roll of quarters and that's fine. Uh, I have other things on my brain. But um, some coins I just, I just can't get. So my local coin shop, I can buy some of the coins that I want. U.S. coins. And this is one of them. Now this is gold toned. It's not a gold coin. Um, this is a presidential dollar. You can, it is legal tender, not that anybody would ever spend it, I bet if I tried to spend this they would think this is phony money. And it says, I can't read it now, but it says in God we trust around the rim and also tells you what uh, mint it came from. So this happens to be a Denver mint. But they have the presidential dollars all the way through Reagan, I think. So I got this book on eBay, and the only problem with it is that it doesn't differentiate between P or D, so I'll probably have to get another one so that I can dedicate one to the P's and one to the D's, but it has all these lovely little plastic slots, and the book that it comes with goes to George W. Bush, but I don't think there's any uh, coin for him. I don't think it goes up that high. So, um, anyways, this is the first one. This is the Washington. Let's see if I can get to focus. It's Washington. So, you can get these. They just sell them to me dollar for dollar at the coin store. So, no big deal. Um, then, I also, I only have three of these, but the coin store has these. Again, this is legal tender. Um, you're probably not going to try to spend it. If you have it, this is an Ike dollar. My coin store will sell these to me as well. It's a little bit bigger than a half dollar. Here's a half dollar by comparison. So, um, but these, they sell to me at a dollar seventy-five, and they're pretty heavy. And they're pretty thick. Again, legal tender, but why would you want to spend it? Just collect them. There's not a whole lot of these to collect because, you know, it's not like they've been making those for a long, long time. Now this, this is a silver 
uh, dollar. This one is from 1964. Well, uh, I did clean it. I will say I cleaned it only because I'll never ever get rid of this one. This is one for my grandfather and he's been dead for almost 50 years so that tells you that he probably had set this aside sometime in the 1960s for me. Uh, he set them aside for all his grandkids. So I have this one. It was getting really, really tarnished, I think, because it was stored inside this old store receipt of his. And I'm sure the paper's acidic. And so his handwriting with my name is on the back. That's the only thing I have of his, is this one silver dollar. So, yeah, it was getting kind of black and not so good looking. So, um, let's see, getting back to this gold tone coin, just to show you in size. Um, this, here's this, and here's a quarter. It's a little bit, little bit bigger than a quarter, not much but not as big as a half dollar. So, um, you can also get um, Susan B. Anthony dollars in the Sacagawea dollars. Um, this is my only presidential dollar, so I'll start collecting these slowly but surely. But like I said, they just sell them to me for a dollar at the coin store. So, um, yeah, I'll be doing that. So anyways, I just came back from this errand to the post office. It's like wicked hot outside. Uh, the mountains, which I can see in the distance, are pretty hazy and probably smoky. Um, I don't smell smoke, but they look hazy like there would be smoke. And I gotta tell you, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a mask rant because people are idiots about the mask. It is 104 degrees outside. You don't need a mask. Well, you don't need a mask anyways. There's absolutely no scientific proof that they do anything. They don't do anything. Okay, I'm going to just give you that little rant. There is not one scientific bit of evidence that they do anything. Now, Probably YouTube will take this video down because I just said that, but it's true. There's no scientific proof. So here are these idiots outside in 104 degree heat wearing masks. Now, if you don't know, number one, the sun kills the virus. It kills all the viruses. Even if you had it and you're outside, the air is just going to dissipate it and the sun's going to kill it pretty quick. So stop wearing your masks outside in the summer. You don't need to wear your mask outside in the summer. It's stupid. And when I see people wearing masks and there's absolutely nobody around, they're just being stupid and fearful. The virus is not going to jump out behind a bush and get you. It is not like a cloud hovering to just rain on you. Just stop the stupidity and the fear mongering. And every time you wear that mask outside in the summer and there's nobody around, you're fear mongering and you're contributing to it. And that's my little rant on masks. And another thing about the virus viruses can't live on metal. Okay? All metal is toxic. To viruses so don't be afraid of handling your coins don't be afraid of touching those metal carts shopping carts that have been sitting out in the Sun just don't be afraid of it just stop the fear stop the fear can't live on metal surfaces all metal is toxic that's why they want you to take more zinc that's why colloidal silver is a good thing to take right now because it is a virus disruptor. So please use your brains and use science and not the fear mongering. And that's my public service announcement for the day. So 
I hope you all have a good rest of the week, and I will let you know when the Etsy shop is up. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.